qualification so the first thing is the preliminaries preliminaries like a, your ideas brainstorming sessions before doing anything you are making a plan these are all preliminaries in that you are going to get a design qualification it is also called as a dq next is iq oq pq installation qualification operation qualification and performance qualification after that requalification and change control and maintenance maintenance we have already seen separately in the industrial management uh, unit second unit in the third unit you are not going to repeat it and you have got a change control program by writing a sops and approaches and forms so that you are going to maintain the status quo of validation and qualification process most of the times in industry they are misnomer qualification and validation equipment qualification equipment validation they will be used don't get confused whenever you are calling it is a validation of equipment means iq op to pq and dq is the plan stage <clears throat> you are going to have this once in a lifetime and continuously first you need to do iq op to pq then you need to do the change control for requalification and maintenance throughout your lifetime you need to do it but for the preliminaries and design qualification is only one time before you are purchasing the equipment so that's what we will see now so the first step in the qualification of a equipment is the design qualification here there is no legal document because it is a idea and the charting out thing so there is no legal document to perform the dq it means it may not be mandatory it is a guideline but generally people will see that also how scientifically you are doing qualification so it is better to create a document and the remaining iq op to pq are mandatory it means you cannot skip them you need to document the evidence you need to show it may be referred as a design review design assessment before you are making and confirming a particular design the goal is to perform risk analysis and to check the design documents of the technical system to ensure that they fulfill the user requirement it means we are considering the user that is a patient or a customer or anybody who is dictating and providing the money we need to have the concern of them and we need to take care of the requirement that accordingly we draw the design qualification so it means the first step in the qualification step is user requirement how many patients are there how much is the batch size whether it is a continuous process or the batch process accordingly you, your design qualification will come and you are making all the things then you are going to purchase the equipment and i go to installation qualification iq <coughs> steps involved in dq even though it is appearing as a brainstorming session it is the first thing which you need to do critically when you do this correctly remaining all the process is going to be considered just like when you are purchasing any mobile phone before purchasing and going to the shop you think in the brain or in the home that i want to have this much of screen size this much of ram and this is the rom capacity and the pixels capacity this is my budget all these things you will be fixing and uh, comparing in uh, multiple sites and coming out of a particular model and going there actually you are setting this what you have done is you have not purchased you have not done anything payment of the money and you have not taken initiation of whether your power plug is working or not you don't bother but you see all of them and go to shop then this step what you are doing in the industry is called as a dq even though you have 14000 or 20000 mobile phone we are spending this many ideas so why can't we make a dq for course of what material and equipment we are going to purchase in factory the first step in the dq is risk analysis it is to decide <coughs> sorry whether a aspect in is dmp critical or not so first thing which we need to do it so gmp critical or not mean if i deviate it so it is going to be affecting gmp or not if the equipment is not having that much impact we don't want to bother about this and we don't want to take a much dq it can be a disposable equipment or it is easily available and you can replace available for that purpose you need to do a fta that is called as fault tree analysis it is appearing as a tree it is used for the computer system validation similarly it is applied for our equipment qualification also so the second step in this particular case is the fmea that is failure mode and effect analysis in this particular case if the systems are not gmp critical so gmp fmea is not necessary for those fm 
faulty analysis if you are having any faults which are going to occur in the gmp in the faulty analysis which you are taking as a critical and for them only you apply the fema why you want to reduce your job and risk say for example you are you are taking a touch screen you have already decided and or you are you want to have something which you, uh, which is not much requirement is not there you need not bother like a casing of your mobile you don't want to bother now so that is not actually a critical to you so you have got some other mechanism to protect your phone so those you need not bother about that before you having this this is later you can do it what i need to do what type of casing i need to do what type of screen guard i need to do these are all you need not do that faulty analysis like that that is the similarly failure mode effect analysis will be done to those conditions where you are having uh, if any effect uh, is caused by the failure of the particular part or any machine what is its impact in gmp unit to analyze in advance and the goal is to rate all potential gmp risks and assign the number to them like 1 2 3 4 5 if a particular part is y5 say for example in your mobile you have got a charging how much speed it is having it is critical to you because you want to have a class regularly within 5 minutes you are entering it it should not become too hot the mobile is similarly such thing you have got a uh, ram speed and uh, you it, it need to have some uh, google meet and software adaptation these are all things which are critical to you. potentially gmp risks if you don't take them similarly we have got in our factory the machine which you have got which is having the highest number is five is called as a gmp critical one is have a less critical so then the cause and effect must be documented if what will happen if i don't purchase that particular mode or particular part or particular model and the third step is hacccp that is hazard analysis of critical control points we are going to take the risks of what what is uh, having a problem with those uh, parts which we don't do it or misuse them and when you analyze it you will be coming out of that this is the minimum quality specification i need to purchase less than that i can't spare i i cannot purchase that particular equipment because most of the parts what i would give rated as a 5 should be meant there and it should be present there and the hazard analysis which is thinking that if i don't purchase them it will be not safe to the factory then you document it and decide that i want to purchase an equipment so in the pmea what do you do every gmp risk with cause and failure effect will be rated with a three things one is the possibility probability of occurrence how many things how many times it is going to occur you are going to rate with uh, say for example 1 to 10 and probability of detection so it is going to occur but how many times you are going to detect it within a fraction of second if it is going and it is coming back <clears throat> then you are not able to detect it there is no bother and the third one is severity effect if whatever the problem which is coming what is its effect on my gmp so the three things which you are going to give in the rating of a particular scale it may be 1 to 5 or 0 to 1 0.1 0.2 0.3 like that and you multiply all of them then you are going to get a number which is called as a risk priority number rpm <clears throat> rpm be calculated by multiplying the three risk values which are having the highest risk that you need to consider first in the fmea and you need to fulfill the specification take the measures if rpm is higher than the predefined measurement threshold by performing the additional in process control and redesign the technical specifications and system and you are going to consider uh, how to deal them and how to make that particular uh, uh, one which is under the control all decision made in the fmea must be documented so that you are going to purchase the right type of equipment for your factory and your for requirements the next tip is the hacccp that is other analysis of critical control points this defines the critical control points in the different grades the goal is to reduce the risk of contamination of the product in this particular case you are going to take either it is a disposable one or washing one and cleaning validation you need to do it and you are thinking that i need to keep a air curtains or a barriers or a separate rooms or a separate building so these are all the things how hazardous in your because cross contamination everything should be avoided so here you are going to consider in the dq itself whether that equipment of a tablet compression or a coating separately you need to do or in the same thing is there any contamination problem you need to see it and decide 
and documentation of the DQ, the results of any risk analysis and documented as they become key input to the qualification and validation process. So we are going to have a document and keep it in our file. Whenever we are purchasing an equipment, we take the file and put an order to different vendors. Then we will go to IQ, OQ, PQ phases. <clears throat> the first thing in this particular case is installation qualification. You have already got the plan. You have already taken the quotations. You have taken one best quotation is supplying with a cheaper cost, less money. And you have taken the decision and you have indented it to the equipment has come. Then you are going to check the documentation against the reality. What you have indented, you are checking with the reality. Say, for example, you have purchased the plan that is having a Samsung with a 8 GB RAM and a 128 GB RAM. And after receiving a package, if it is not a Samsung, it is something else. Again, you will be doing, it is a document what you have applied and what you have received, it is not matching, you will return that good. In the similar manner, whatever the equipment we have decided with the specification with the HACCP, FEMEA, RPM number, everything we have done and we have not got the similar equipment, we are not going to install in our factory, we have to, we have to return it back. So we are going to check the reality what we have received really with the document what we have created in the DQ and both are confirming with the order what I have placed then I am going to take that installation of the particular qualification installation is going to be proceeded. For that purpose I need to create first develop a IP proto IP protocol installation qualification protocol and it uh, blank protocol has to be approved by your superior and uh, authorized by the head and you need to perform the installation qualification protocol and work out the IQ report to any part is missing or a manual is missing or spare part is missing, everything you see, then whatever you have indented, asked for it is present and you ask them to install in your factory and approve the IQ report and you can proceed for the next OQ. So this IQ fix is executed with the personnel of the supplier of the system Maximum they will do their work without intervention of the factory personnel. Those who are vendor, they have supplied the equipment. <coughs> they will be present throughout this work. And company persons are the uh, production people or any person who have invented, they will, their intervention is very less because the person who has supplied open the package and will remove all the things and explain the things and show that then it is matching, then we will install it. Otherwise, we will object it and you will return that one and ask him to go and uh, you will say that I will not pay the money because you have not supplied as per my need. Second one is the operational qualification. It is defined as a documentary verification that everything we have created a predetermined document and comparing with this and verification that the system or subsystem. What is the system? If you have purchased the trade rider, it is a system and the trade rider has got a fan, it is a subsystem. And, uh, Fan is, if it is present, the coils and fan is the main system, your vacuum pump is a subsystem that perform as intended throughout your anticipated operation ranges that you are going to find out in the operation qualification. Say, for example, what is the operational range of a trade dryer? I want to keep the material from 40 to 200 degrees centigrade. Whether it is working at 40 and working at 200 constantly, I will be checking it. This is actually what I am anticipating to work. Sometime I am going to heat it at 250 degree centigrade. If it is not getting heated at 250, it is going at maximum of 200. Then it is not good for me. You have applied for 250 and it is not having the control. It is keep on going at 300, 400. It is without any control. It is not good for you. Because you have anticipated some operating range. Yes, it is not working in that range. It is either not going to that range or it is going beyond that range. It is not good. The operation qualification is failed. Your vacuum, you want to apply the vacuum pump to 0.1 mm HG and you are not able to get it. You will reject the part of system. <clears throat> so even though you installed it, it does not mean that you are going to use that equipment for your factory unless you check the entire lower limit and upper limit of your operational ranges. Your compression machine, how much RPM you have invented, is it working or not just with the MP and with the cap? Tablet manufacturing, how much speed it is working, you will check it, operational speed, then you will accept it. So the OQ is involves the personnel from the supplier and the customer company. Both are present in this particular one. It means 
in the vendor we have supplied the equipment is also present our factory com personnel will also be present both work together and check it and the factory person will be learning the methodology and he is getting a confidence with the new equipment and this is phase is over then the next stage is go to pq that is performance qualification pq should be executed by the customer personnel <clears throat> that is i am going to use in the production i am going to learn the get a training and learn that and uh, operate it in my uh, factory according to my requirement of hardness and friability i want to have a in the punching machine i want to have the check the performance of the tablet made by myself so the documentation and the test description are identical to the oq but only the thing is even though i am drying uh, is 40 and 250 my dryer is working but my heating temperature is 150 i will work in now 150 degree centigrade and keep it for 2 hours whether it is stably present at 150 or not check it in the performance qualification everything oq document and this is same we need to create a document we need to get a approval of blank we need to execute the blank and we need to check the report and we need to take the decision to qualify or not <clears throat> the same thing will be applicable for iq oq pq also but in the performance qualification i am going to pinpointing my specific value where i want to work whether it is a temperature or a vacuum or a speed in the not in the range like operation qualification in the performance qualification particularly in a particular uh, point where i want to work that you will be checking it sometimes iq oq and pq are merged <clears throat> to decrease the number of documents so that because your range of working is same as that of your performance required so you are going to take starting at 40 and you may be going at to 200 and you are done in the oq the same thing will be applicable to you also here and you no need to do separately and you are approving it by referring the oq document and saying that as performance is also okay for me so this is actually called as a performance qualification also called as a pq after pq is made your equipment is meant for uh, uh, it is it can be used to uh, validation of your processes and you can uh, create one log book for that and wherever you are doing the work and you are going to enter in that and uh, but you need to do a program called as a change control when you have done uh, this particular one you are going to have a um, change control program by drawing a sop that is standard operating procedure everybody should work in that particular manner only sometimes because you you may be seeing in that uh, our blackberry or uh, we have got a blueberry system first we need to switch on the power then we need to switch on the uh, power of blueberry then we need to attach to the uh, our projector then only it will work in a manner when you are uh, operating first we need to switch on then we need to switch on the sub system in that pattern only we need to this is actually what the change control program means the repeated steps which you are doing regularly that will be written in operating procedure in that only you need to work otherwise your sop will not work because your equipment will not show so what the way it is going to work so the sequence of activities what you required to do you are documenting it is an sop it is defined as a formal system by which the qualified representative of a appropriate discipline review the proposed and actual changes that might affect the validation status and the intent is to determine the need for the action that would ensure the document that the system is maintained in the validated state it will work in that range only say for example you have invented the dry dryer which is having a range of 40 to 250 and you want to try for heat at 250 degree centigrade maximum limit is 200 you want to heat at 250 it is not possible the change control it will see in this particular sop that this equipment and model used only for the less than 200 only so this is actually what it is a lifetime monitoring approach it will be done by the change control and in the implementation of the change control system the following accepts to be considered that is early characterization of the change as a major or minor most of the times if you are having a problem of a vacuum pump and you have got a vacuum tray dryer and you are replacing the vacuum pump <clears throat> if the similar make you are purchasing it there is no problem but when you are changing the vacuum make or pump with another one a major change is occurred its capacity is low such things which we need to consider 
whether the major change or minor change. If your entire equipment you are changing it and you are saying that my equipment is qualified, no. If some smart part like a fuse something has gone, it is a minor. You can call it as a change. It is not going to have an impact on VMP. So these are all what you are going to document in the logbook, and you are saying that as my validation status is there. Otherwise, you need to again do the validation if you are throwing the old equipment and again doing a new equipment, and you need to do the again validation. Then your validation status is not there. so it is a easy and logical way to document flow and you are going to give a sequence of uh, dates where you have done the changes in your parts or you have changed the any major part that you are documenting it and easy and logical to take a decision whether how many times i need to replace a belt or something which you can have it by this program it is a good practice that requested change is only implemented after appropriate change control procedures like you need to have deviation of whatever which you are going to do you need to get a first approval and you need to get a approval is given to the budget department they will be taking a part sanctioning the money then you are indenting the part and you are bringing it and you are making that particular part is installed and if any requirement of revalidation is there you are doing it then your validation status is present otherwise you have completely equipment you have validated it and qualification is over and one part is breaking or or part is not working you have thrown the equipment you have kept the new equipment and you are saying that i have already done once but this is a new equipment again you need to do your validation is not there so you will be considered as not manufacturing your product as per gmp so this problem will be there so most of the time the change control procedure will have the system change sometimes you will be having a exchange exchange means you are taking one part of one machine to another part but just you are doing the same part same make everything log the entry is sufficient if you are change like you are bringing a major change in your entire uh, 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 machine part is changed it is critical then you need to do the requalification if it is not critical uncritical you just make an entry in the log book and inform that i have done this particular fuse Changed. I have done the belt change. It is not going to impact. So I am proceeding with the same equipment. So this is actually what the validation of equipment we are almost over. Then we are entering into the validation. <clears throat> so now the question comes: What is validation and how to make a strategy? Just like a DQ, we made a strategy and plan. In the validation, do you have any strategy? So validation of the process. Previously, it is a tablet manufacturing machine. now we are going to enter into tablet manufacturing process previously it is a drying equipment and now it is a drying process so qualification of equipment now we are entering into the quality validation of the process so we know that validation concept is the basic strategy is to prove that the performance of the process or the system under all condition expected to be encountered during the future operations and we are going to have uh, Uh, validation involves the proving the engineering design correct operating procedures and ranges are correct maintenance procedures are correct and it is having a validation life cycle so we are going to have a proper design by dq and oq iq which are having already we made it and maintenance procedures and change control we have made it then we are drawing a validation life cycle in validation master plan and your calibration procedures madam i have already told at an equipment we need not do validation but regularly you need to calibrate them if they are fluctuating or changing for them you are going to write a calibration plans master plans remaining validation master plan you are going to draw so in the validation life cycle you are going to take uh, different steps so determination of the quality attributes is the first in the validation life cycle so what is the quality attribute quality attribute means your moisture content in the drain your hardness in your compression machine so this is actually what the quality attribute is you are going to decide before you are starting your validation life cycle as a tablet manufacturing process or drain so prior to the start of validation the required quality and intended use should be defined based on the validation studies and the validation protocol has to be placed who are going to do and uh, how to do it you are going to write there then you are going to have a different steps of validation we are going to see later types of validation 
and control during uh, routine validation procedure how to make the control procedures so most of the time the control mechanism will be done by the drawing a forms and protocols that will be followed after uh, due care they are getting uh, mt1 is getting approved then we are going to use them for the application in our studies those mt forms when you are doing execution of that particular protocol so we are going to have a those forms continuously we are going to use such forms for any machine just filling the equipment name and uh, we are going to write a critical parameters there and we are going to use it now the validation protocol this one you might have already got in the validation master plan very in the uh, detailed manner it is going to contain the basic format in every company they will be having what we have already seen in the previous case the description of the process and equipment to be validated so in the tablet manufacturing process we are going to have a description of all equipment like your hopper like your uh, tablet punching machine like your uh, discharge bin you are going to have your uh, um, room air, air air quality and you are going to have a cleaning what is water quality all these things which are going to have all the things which are concerned with we need to see here the block diagram of equipment and process flow diagram and batch formula and master plan formula are essential the protocol should contain the detailed description of the sampling and uh, uh, clearly state the dq iq oq peak of each and equipment we are going to use in that process the protocol should be endorsed by the designated representative of each unit like uh, prepared by uh, assured by and authorized by or checked by authorized by that will be present and what are the steps which are involved in the validation first establishing the standards of quality attributes of air and water and if it is uh, a specific one like a tablet and uh, the drain that uh, what you want to achieve that you need to define and define the systems and subsystems for the desired quality and uh, quantity how much you are going to base it on the if it is a water manufacturing system you are going to have that one as a um, criteria how much you want to cre create a quality of water whether it is water for injection or it may be a purified water and designing the equipment and controls and monitoring technologies <clears throat> most of the times we have got automatic process control and strain gauges in the tablet compression machine in the water manufacturing you are having a toc analyzers and uh, total organic uh, content analyzers we are going to have a conductivity meters like that we are going to have a pack tools and we are going to study establish the standard for operating page ranges where you want to work we have already seen in the oq and pq and developing the iq so this we have already discussed then we are going to develop a oq that is also over then we are going to establish a action and alert level in the operational standard when you are going to have beyond your limit so you need to have a action and alert level say for example every time you are going to have heating your uh, tablet granules you are going to get a moisture content at 1% so your limit is 0.5 to 1.5% is the operational range if anything is going beyond or beyond that it will be alerting you if it is going beyond that in region then it is going to take a action to change your fan or anything which you are going to have that you are going to draw and developing a pq stage where you are going to confirm the appropriateness these are all the things which are already completed in the qualification stage there will not be any problem and uh, supplementing the validation maintenance program that includes the mechanism of a control and the system established the preventive maintenance and the recalibration of equipment everything we need to track in the preventive maintenance we have already seen uh protocol how to do and we in the maintenance procedures we have done four types of maintenance procedures which maintenance procedure is working out it we need to have a supplementary document here instituting the six, say, schedule for periodic review of the system performance and requalification this is the what we have already done in the scheduled maintenance procedures and completing the protocols and the documentation for the above steps and now after making all the things ready it means we have iq oq pq ready maintenance procedures ready sop is ready 
and we have made the all gmp critical quality attributes what we want to achieve we have made the action limit and alert limits where i my process attributes is going beyond or less than what i need to do that is everything ready then i go to validation so what is this validation again you are coming to the pro definition process validation is establishing a documentary evidence which provides high degree of assurance that a specific process will consistently produce a product meeting the predetermined specification and quality characteristics this is the standard definition any book which is there i have split into four parts first we are creating a pre determined specification we are creating a checking with that and creating a documentary evidence and proving that my equipment and process is consistently working to get a quality needs <clears throat> where do i apply why we need to apply this if you do the qualification it is a few year product recalls will be there and your product will not fail more technical and economically sound process and scientifically sound justification for any changes which you are going to make it that is for any regulator for the pre approval ins inspection they are very happy with this protocols and they will give approval immediately to sell your product who are involved in this validation one is engineering this might have told by the madam in detail R&D, manufacturing, and quality assurance people, all of them. Generally, the best approach is CMC control committee will be there. If you are getting M Pharma after that degree, if you are joining, if you are in the validation group, you may be one person in CMC group. That is, chemistry, manufacturing, and control. Control means quality control people will be there, and your manufacturing they will be having the production people. In the chemistry, they are having the R&D people. That is, formulation development and API manufacture. All the team will come. they will take the decision of this validation process what are the different types of validation it is very important question for your exam and you need to know that is prospective validation retrospective validation and concurrent validation the last one is revalidation <clears throat> so the prospective validation you are going to do once in a lifetime and retrospective validation after a particular period of the time and concurrent validation every day you need to do and follow it it means as like your qualification you have got also here something which you need to do once in a lifetime sometime you need to do regularly in addition to that you have got a calibration everything you are going to do regularly the first one is prospective validation i hope you are uh, going to follow it and ppt this one also i have uploaded in the google classroom you can check it and uh, see if term limits we will repeat again this is very important aspect in our pharmaceutical industry is prospective validation in the prospective validation if any product which you want to sell you need to do the prospective validation so what is prospective validation it is validation protocol is executed before the process is put into the commercial use whenever you want to sell it if you want to market your product you need to put this protocol and get the passed this is normally carried out in connection with the introduction of a new drug application a new drug product protocol how to test your samples to take a hardness and friability and uh, your disintegration and uh, to proceed further your tablet manufacturing process similarly you need to take a sample every one hour to see the moisture content analyzer to see that whether drying is problem correctly placing or not you need to do the concurrently every day so that you are going to meet with the compare with the previous batches and see that can i proceed or not so this is an excellent tool so that you will not do any error during your process in concurrent validation current production batches are used to monitor the processing parameter to find the consistency of the quality from batch to batch previous batch and this batch how much it is a deviation we have already got action limit and alert limits this batch is showing any near to that we will take a alertness that something is going bad and sometimes we need to take an action by interrupting a process rectifying the plot Uh, rectifying the fault and we are going to replace the part or anything and we can do the part this is actually part of concurrent validation regularly we need to do it the third one is retrospective validation <clears throat> retrospective validation of the process is carried out for the products which are already in the distribution you have already sold it and you have got the data in your factory and you have got a customer responses and they felt very happy all together you are going to draw a statistical analysis of your process by taking a mean and a standard deviation and a percent rsd and you are going to compare 
the control charts and how much confident your your match is it will be told by the retrospective validation this approach is based upon the information accumulated from the production testing and quality control data it also involves the trend analysis using the control charts like upper control limit and lower control limit we are going to have in the process capability studies which you have might have already studied in the statistics so this historical manufacturing and quality control data of the product will be compared you can tell to your customer or your uh, inspector that my batches have prepared no batch is failed till now all batches are having average of this much and standard deviation is very low confidently you can sell that i have got a great facilities so that i can give you a confidently the product which meets your requirement this is actually what the purpose of retrospective validation to keep you fit to sell your product after longer period of the time you want to say yourself here also you need to have a controls most of the times controls will be done by the revalidation and the change control program whenever your process is changing say for example you are shifting from batch size to batch size more little bit revalidation process has to be done when you are going beyond the limit of your upper limit and lower limit revalidation you need to do sometimes you need to have a change control program you should not deviate your product by operating procedures for that you are writing the sops and they are prepared and routine operation should be performed according to the SO, established sop only if anybody is deviating they will be called as a non gmp so you are not following cgmp so any proposed changes should be evaluated for their impact and the necessity of requalification is uh, should be determined with and revalidation and evaluation should be performed depending upon the impact that may occur in the chain sometimes you want to change your entire factory from hyderabad to visakhapatnam it means it is a major change you are going to do you are going to do requalification revalidation everything your process will be there it is a major change a major site change so then there will be a certain things which you need to do according to your changes which are approved as per the law action and alert limits are set depending upon the past data based on the statistical analysis and the retrospective validation you are going to give the upper limit if it is uh, touching you need to alert if it is touching beyond that you are going to take an action they are well placed the action and alert limits are different from the product specification they are more stringent than the product specification of your pharmacopoeia and alert will levels will be when exceeded they indicate the drift in the normal operation it is a warning it is giving and exceeding the action limit indicate that you need to stop your process and take an action to bring back to normal and you have to proceed this is actually what the entire journey